What we did last time, we did a structural optimization, a topology optimization. And let me just, I'm going to add a structural optimization, which is what ANSYS is calling the topology optimization tool. I'm just going to add a new one just to remind you how we have that set up. And I'll go into setup here. Um, but we set up using the default, which was uh, the constraint of setting a certain mass retained. So it defaults to 50%. We adjusted it down to 40% for that final run. And then, so that's the constraint on the optimization, but you have to have a goal, either maximizing or minimizing something. So we were minimizing compliance, which is the same thing as maximizing um, uh, stiffness. And the reason that's kind of the default is the, the mathematics works out a little uh, more efficient that way, so that it actually runs pretty fast. We were able to, in a minute or two, get a result on that. But there are other types of optimizations we might want to do that don't run quite as fast, but may give us uh, different results depending on the situation. So that's what I want to show you today. Because in your project, sometimes, if, if you choose to do topology optimization, um, oftentimes the compliance minimization may not be the quite right uh, approach to take. Um, so if we go back here, we have our static structural on this plate. And remember, topology optimization, you're removing material. So we start with as much material as possible on this plate. We have the fixed constraint on one side, the 500 newtons uh, downward on the other side. So you load it just like any static structural. And then you add the structural optimization on top of that. And last time, we just went with the default, which was um, if we go just optimiz optimization region being everything that doesn't have a constraint on it. Um, you can fine tune that if you just want to have it remove material in a certain area. You have to split your bodies to do that, but you can do that. Um, we went with the default objective, like I said, compliance minimization or stiffness maximization. Now, with that, it would just keep all the material if you're trying to maximize stiffness, right? So you have to set a constraint on that. And that's where that mass constraint comes in. You say 50% or we adjusted it to 40% um, to tell it, Okay, maximize stiffness while, but keep only 50% of the material, right? And so then you give it, you get the more interesting result. So that's the default setting. We had adjusted the mesh to be three millimeters. We saw the dependence on mesh size, and we did. So I'm going to delete this extra one I added. Just otherwise, just want to show you what the. Well, actually, I want to stay there for a second because I want to show you the default. Um, but let me. There's different ways you can approach this. So. With this objective, I can let's look at the constraint. So by default, it's doing a mass, 50% retained mass. And we did an analysis where we ch checked the result. If I go there, open up that one. This was that validation run where we took that, the mesh that was output, took it in the space claim, extruded a solid. And the reason we did that is we can run it, get the actual displacement, actual stress on the model because the topology optimization is just giving us a shape. It's not giving us any performance. Um, so when we did that, that will pop up here in a second. One, one thing when you have a lot of these panels up, um, the letter at the beginning of the, the name here tells you which panel you're on. So D is the one we did with the validation. And we there we got the actual stress result. Now the issue there is you're not getting the stress till after the fact, right? And there's not really a good way to tie how much retained mass to what the max stress is going to be, right? You kind of would do trial and error. Um, so what we'd like to be able to do is instead of um, constraining the mass retained, constrain what the max stress could be because we know the failure uh, criteria for our material. So the way we do that, we, instead of doing the default of a mass retained constraint. I'm going to delete that one. Now I'm going to add another constraint. So under structural optimization, um, we have these response constraints, and there's many we can do here. One of the more interesting or probably relevant ones to problems you might be working on is um, global stress constraint, which will keep the global stress in the model below a certain value. So it's here I'm going to put, let's say, Let's say it was around 50 in our model. Let's say we could go up to 80 um, and still be safe for the material we're using. So we might want to see what design we get at 80 megapascals. But we have to make one additional change. That's not megapascals. Let me change that. And that brings up another point. I was as I was testing different scenarios yesterday. I or yeah, I was noticing that 
it mattered what unit system I was in, strangely. So if I was in millimeter, uh, kilogram, second, it was giving me different results than if I was a meter, kilogram, second. Um, that's kind of telling me there's probably some numerical roundoff happening when I work in millimeters. So it's actually working better to be in meters. So just one thing to keep in note, if you're doing topology optimization, keep the units in meters. Um, there seems to be some numerical things that happen that don't give very good results in millimeters, unfortunately. So because of that, I have to enter 86. Since it's in Pascals, I'm in meters, kilogram second. All right, so eight, let's say that's our max stress that the material can handle. Now, we do have to change the objective as well. We can't just change the max stress because here we no longer have a mass constraint. So by minimizing compliance, it's just going to retain all the material. That constraint isn't going to play in. So we've got to change this from compliance to mass and want to minimize mass. Okay, so now we're telling it minimize the mass. That's our design goal. So we don't really, we're not targeting mass anymore. And we're saying keep the stress below 80, mag, 80 megapascals. So that's more of kind of a practical set of constraints and optimizations that would better fit usually problems you're working on where you have a material failure criteria and you're trying to minimize mass. You don't know what that mass is going to be ahead of time. The, so that has obvious benefits in terms of problem domain. The reason that's not the default is that the topology optimization takes quite a bit longer when you do it this way. Um, the mathematics doesn't work out quite as nice, so it has to do more solving uh, uh, for each iteration. So it takes about 10 times longer. Um, so it's just going to take quite a bit longer. So I'm not going to run it here. I already have the results uh, for us. But I just wanted to show you how to set that up. So I already have one that's set up the same way. Only difference here is I've also added that extrusion constraint, which gives a better result. Uh, but it's still uh, 80, mascal, 80 pascals, 80 megapascals, max stress, and the objective of minimizing mass. So let me delete this one I added that's blank here. And so just a reminder of the result we got for the initial one. This was with the compliance minimization and the 40% um, mass target. We got this. this is basically what we did uh, last time. Now, the result doing the stress ends up being a little bit different. So you end up with a different solution. So this is setting the stress to be max of 80 megapascals, but minimizing mass. Uh, so you get, it runs longer, about 10 times longer, but you, get a, you also get a different result. Okay, so um, changing up how you do the constraints also is a way to get to a different solution area. Because um, that's one challenge with topology optimization. It gets you to a solution, but you don't have a lot of freedom of what that solution looks like. Um, so the constraints allow you to change that a little bit. Well, let's look at, so I did the validation run on both of these. So let's take a look at, I pulled up the one we did on the, um, the compliance minimization. And so we saw the equivalent stress was around 50 megapascals, total deformation 0.1 millimeters. And then we can also look at the mass here. This one we set 40% mass as our constraint. And if I go to the geometry properties, the mass is 0.12 kilograms. Okay, so that's our what we did last time. Now if I switch to the, let me open this one, switch to the one where we, we were using a max stress in minimizing mass, which gave us that different result here, this one here. Open up the validation run on that one. So here, if I look at the stress, the stress is higher, right, because I set the max to be 80. I actually used a little bit less retained mass um, on this one, because if I went to that 0.5, it wasn't fully connected. Um, like right here, you had a really thin spot. So I went with uh, 0.46. You have to keep things a little bit more connected, so have cleaner geometry. So that may be why the stress is a little bit lower than 80, but it kept it below the constraint of 80 max that we set. So the stress is low enough. Um, so before the displacement was 0.1 millimeter, now it's 0.13 millimeters. So since we're not minimizing compliance, the displacement is higher, which we would expect. But let's look at what the mass does. So before it was what we did last time, we ended up at 0.12 or 
almost 0.13 kilograms at that 40% target. With this stress as our target or constraint, if I look at the geometry here, um, look at the properties to get our mass, ends up being 0 0.10 kilograms. So approximately 20% less mass, a little bit higher stress, but maybe if that, if you can handle up that 80 megapascals, you're getting a better uh, lower mass design point. Um, so that's, I just wanted to show that because that's a fairly important distinction between whether you're doing compliance minimization or mass minimization with a, a stress constraint. May, really the only drawback is the longer run time with the, the, the stress constraint. So I wanted to show that this um, workbench file is on the Canvas site, so you can take a look at that uh, as a reference. One thing I did notice, some of you in class were having issue when you double click on a geometry. I noticed as I was working through this, sometimes it would open space clean, but sometimes it opened this discovery thing. Um, it looks like ANSYS is trying to replace the space clean with the discovery, so it had kind of the same steps you had to follow. But if I tried to open it in space clean, it was giving me an error, which I saw some people had that error last time. So you can do the same steps in a discovery that we did in space clean, it basically has the same user interface. So I think ANSYS is trying to move to that away from space claim. And also, when you're doing a topology optimization, make sure you're in meters, because the results were not good in millimeters because of numerical issues.